If you've been watching my previous videos, you would know that the M1 MacBook Pro's main difference to the MacBook Air is that it has a fan. It keeps the M1 chip much cooler, keeps the chassis of the Pro cooler, and also allows you to squeeze a decent amount of additional power out of the M1 chip as it can run cooler. If you want to see the thermals between the two models compared, click the link in the top right corner. Now, a big issue I had with the previous generation MacBook Pro with the Intel chip is that the fans would be so loud, I couldn't even have Skype or Google Hangout meetings for work because the fans would just be too loud and distracting and my mic would actually pick them up unless I was sitting a fair distance away from my Mac. But how noisy is the fan in the M1 MacBook Pro? Well, in traditional Created Labs fashion, let's just get straight to the point. If your MacBook's CPU is under roughly 50 degrees Celsius, the fan won't even turn on and there is zero fan noise. Now you're gonna get this result for almost 95% of the time you use the MacBook because as we've seen, the M1 MacBooks actually do run quite cool and they are very thermally efficient. Now, when the fan does turn on during gaming, rendering, or 3D modeling, for example, the fan noise is barely noticeable at lower RPMs or revolutions per minute. If you're in a quiet room, you may just barely hear it, but once the CPU starts to get hotter and hotter, the fan RPMs will increase, but even at its fastest speed, it's still noticeably quieter when compared with the previous Intel generation. I have a base model 2017 Intel MacBook Pro here, and I will be fully comparing it against the new M1 version. One other thing I noticed is that the fan on the M1 is quite intelligent, more so than the Intel versions. On the Intel Macs, the fan would just go from zero to 100 and stay at its loudest setting until the CPU temperature went down or you stopped whatever intensive task you were doing, for example, rendering a video. With the new M1 MacBooks, the fan speed goes up and down and will only be at its loudest and most powerful setting for as long as necessary until it cools down the CPU enough. Then it will get quieter and the cycle continues. So let's get into the testing, shall we? Make sure you stay tuned until the end because the comparison I'm about to do is very interesting. Now in these tests, I won't be using a decibel meter because I think it doesn't really give you an accurate portrayal of the noise difference in real life. I mean, if I say X laptop is Y decibels louder than the other, how are you supposed to understand that through a video? So instead, I'll be putting a high quality microphone next to the laptops and using the mouse click of my MX Master mouse as a comparison so you can hear for yourselves. The mic will not move throughout these tests, it will be the same distance away, and all other variables, for example, ambient room temperature, will stay the same. First, let's see how loud the fan is on the M1 MacBook Air. <laughs> Just joking, guys. Let's see how the M1 MacBook Pro stacks up against the 2017 Intel MacBook Pro. I manually adjusted the fans of the M1 MacBook Pro to reach 7,000 RPM, just like the Intel one did. And the noise levels were exactly the same. This means the fan itself isn't necessarily quieter. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same fan and heatsink design as the M1 version. It's just that the M1 MacBook Pro is so much more thermally efficient and more powerful than the Intel version that it simply doesn't need to spin its fans as much. Listen to this closer comparison between the two when rendering a 3D animation. Bear in mind, both MacBooks are at the exact same 100% CPU load during this render. 
So the winner is obvious, the M1 MacBook Pro. It simply doesn't need to spin its fans that fast, making it significantly quieter than the previous Intel versions. If you're doing a lot of Skype or Hangouts meetings, I doubt you will ever be negatively impacted by fan noise, and that's even if the fans turn on at all. In my testing, they often don't unless you're really stressing the CPU or the GPU to the max by doing intense gaming or rendering. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. But apart from that, I will catch you guys in the next one.